Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. Back in episode 134, I talked about all the different bits that I use in my CNC machine when I cut and carve fretboards, necks, and guitar bodies. And in this episode, I thought I would expand a little bit on that subject and talk about the different settings that I use when I make all the different carves that I make. When I talk about settings, what I'm referring to is the feed rate, or how fast the router is moving, the depth of cut, which is how deep it cuts into the wood with each pass, the step over, which is how much of the wood the bit is carving out on the horizontal with each pass, and then uh, typically the plunge rate, or how fast it's, uh, the bit is being pushed down into the wood. And You'll hear the term feed and speeds all the time, and what that refers to is feed obviously refers to feed rate. Speed, however, refers to the RPM of the spindle. And that really isn't applying to what I do because I'm using a DeWalt 611 trim router. And if you're using a trim router, typically they're variable speed. And I set mine to the lowest speed, the, the number one setting which is about 16,000 RPM, and that's plenty fast enough to do just about every kind of carving I would ever encounter. And what it also does is it extends the life of the brushes that are in the motor, and those brushes have to be replaced periodically. So uh, if you set it for the lowest setting, those brushes will last much longer. But I would still recommend, if you're going to be using a trim router on a CNC machine, to get a, a spare set of brushes and keep those handy uh, so that you can replace them when the old ones wear out, and they will wear out, and it'll always happen right in the middle of a carve. Anyway, if you're using a, um, a spindle, which is controlled with a variable frequency drive, then the, the speeds do play more of a role, but um, I'm not going to get into that with, with my settings because I'm, I'm just not using them. So, now I think the easiest way for me to explain this is to go through each of the different cutting operations I do in the order that I do them. So we'll start out with the very first cutting operation that I do when I start a new guitar project. And that operation is to cut the slots in the fretboard for the frets. And to do this I'm using a two flute spiral upcut bit that has a diameter of 0.024 inches. You can go a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, but that works for me, so that's what I use. And the settings that I use are uh, a feed rate, which is how fast the router moves, of 20 inches per minute. The depth of cut is 0.01 inches. Step over isn't important in this operation because I'm just cutting a slot, I'm not cutting a pocket. And step over refers to the movement um, on the horizontal as the bit cuts into the wood. And since that's not necessary in a slot, I don't have to worry about that setting. Plunge rate is about 10 inches per minute. Now once I've cut the slots, the next operation is to cut the fret marker dots. And in my case, I typically use a marker dot that's about an eighth of an inch in diameter. And when I'm cutting them with my CNC machine, I'm using what is known as a pocket cut. I'm not drilling a hole. If I was going to drill it, I'd just use my drill press. But at, since I'm using the CNC machine, I use a pocket cut. And to do that, I have to use a bit that's slightly smaller than the hole it's cutting. So if it's an eighth of an inch in diameter, what I'll use is a sixteenth of an inch diameter two flute spiral upcut end mill. And the settings for that one is 40 inch per minute feed rate, a depth of cut of 0.03 inches, and a step over of 0.03 inches. And you'll notice whenever I talk about both depth of cut and step over with my bits, I typically use the same um, setting because it just keeps things simple and it's easy for me to remember. So um, depth of cut of 0.03, step over of 0.03, and then the plunge rate is still about 10 inches per minute. Now after cutting the marker dots, the next operation is to cut the radius of the fretboard and the perimeter shape of the fretboard. And to do this, I'm going to use one bit and two different cutting operations. 
The bit that I'm going to use is a two flute spiral up cut bit with a diameter of an eighth of an inch, one eighth of an inch. And I use typically a ball nose bit because I get a smoother finish with the ball nose uh, as opposed to a flat end mill. And there are two cutting operations, a rough cut and a finish cut. For the rough cut, the bit, um, the feed rate is um, 80 inches per minute. The uh, depth of cut is 0 0.04 inches and the step over is 0 0.04 inches. And then I bump up the plunge rate to 20 inches per minute. For the finish cut, um, the feed rate is 150 inches per minute. Uh, depth of cut is not important at this stage, and I don't have to worry about that because we've already cut out the, the majority of the wood during the rough cut. What is important, however, is the step over, and I will decrease that down to 0 0.02 inches, and that gives me a nice smooth finish. I still have to do a little bit of sanding, but this is one of those uh, situations where you have to take into consideration how long your finishing cut is going to take as opposed to how long it would take to just sand it. And, you know, it's kind of an experience thing, but you may find that uh, if you find a happy medium, uh, you can get a nice finish that you can just lightly sand and you get it done faster. So um, that's what I do for the radius and the perimeter cut. At that stage, the fretboard is complete and I can just set it aside and now I'm going to do the uh, neck itself. So the first cut that I'll do with the neck is to cut the truss rod slot. And to do that, I'm using a two flute spiral up cut bit with a diameter of an eighth of an inch. And the settings are um, 80 inches per minute feed rate. The depth of cut is 0 0.04. The step over is 0 0.04 inches and plunge rate is 20 inches per minute. And you can use a ball end or a flat end mill. I typically use a flat end mill. It doesn't really matter. Um, that's, that's really up to you. Once the, the truss rod slot is, has been cut out, I can then flip the blank over and cut the back contour of the neck along with the headstock shape and thickness and then drill the tuner holes. And I'll do this using one bit. Uh, typically I'll use a two flute spiral upcut bit that's a quarter of an inch in diameter. Now I said upcut, but it really depends on the kind of wood that I'm using. If it's a piece of just regular um, hard maple or um, mahogany, uh, I'll typically use just an upcut bit because that works just fine. But if I'm cutting into like a figured wood like flame maple, because of its tendency to chip and tear out, I'll use a spiral down cut bit, which greatly minimizes uh, chip and tear out. But this, the uh, cutting operations, um, there are going to be two of them uh, to do this um, back contour, headstock, and tuner holes, and that is a rough cut and a finish cut. For the rough cut, I'll set the feed rate at 150 inches per minute. The depth of cut will be 0.06 to 0 0.08 inches and the step over will be 0.06 to 0.08 inches. Now, there's a little bit of a range there, and the reason why I have different ranges is um, obviously with a 0.08 setting for both depth of cut and step over, I can get the work done a lot faster. However, it's really, really loud, so I have to take into consideration who I might be disturbing if I uh, increase that depth of cut and step over. So it's going to be one of those two. Plunge rate is about 20 inches per minute. That's for the rough cut. For the finish cut, I'll stick with the 150 inches per minute uh, feed rate. Depth of cut doesn't matter, so I don't bother with that. But the step over is decreased to 0 0.02 inches to give me a nice clean finish. It'll still need sanding like the uh, fretboard radius did, but it's not going to be so severe that it's going to take a lot of time. After cutting the contour of the neck, uh, thicknessing the headstock and the cutting the shape as well as uh, drilling the tuner holes, I can set the neck aside with the fretboard and start the cutting and carving operations on the body itself. And I'm going to be using uh, a couple of bits to do that. Both will be a quarter inch in diameter. Both will be spiral uh, two flute bits. 
Uh, one, however, the first bit that I'll use is going to be a down cut bit, and that's because it cuts a nice clean uh, edge in the top of the wood as you start your cut. But typically what I'll do is I'll only make that cut about an eighth of an inch deep all the way around the perimeter of the body as well as all the pockets and contours and that sort of thing. Then once that uh, initial cut has been done, I'll switch bits and go with an upcut bit and finish the cuts. That way when that bit cuts all the way through to the bottom of the body, that bottom edge is going to be nice and clean like the top edge. And it's also important to use the down cut bit if you're doing like a book matched figured top you know, just to prevent that tear out and, and chipping and that sort of thing. The uh, settings, however, are the same regardless of whether it's an up cut or down cut bit. And again, I'm using 150 inches per minute for the feed rate. Depth of cut is that 0 0.06 inches to 0 0.08 inches. And the step over is the same 0.06 to 0 0.08 inches. Uh, plunge rate is about 20 inches per minute. And um, for specialty cuts, such as inlay, uh, I have a strategy that I try to follow, and that is I'll do two cutting operations. The rough cut, where I will use the largest bit that I can uh, hog out the basic design, then I'll switch to a V-carve bit in order to cut the fine details in the, in the finish so that I have nice, sharp, crisp details. And so... Typically what that will mean is for the rough cut I'll use that two flute spiral up cut bit that's a sixteenth of an inch in diameter and that will cut out most of the material. If I can get away with it I'll jump to an eighth of an inch but it's typically about a sixteenth of an inch. And that one again is a uh, 40 inch per minute feed rate, uh, 0 0.03 inch depth of cut and a 0 0.03 inch step over and a plunge rate of about 10 inches per minute. For the V bit, I can keep it about the same, 40 inches per minute, and um, depth of cut can actually equal the total depth of the inlay. Uh, with V bits, you can carve really fast, and that final detail cut can go pretty quickly. So um, I'll do that, that depth of cut of 0 0.04 inches, you know, or whatever the depth of the inlay is carved, and then uh, typically the, the step over will be around 0 0.04 inches. Plunge rate can be 20 inches per minute if you want it to be. So those are the settings that I use on my CNC machine with the different bits that I use for the different cutting operations. Now, those are my settings. Your settings may differ a little bit, but I think you'll find they're not going to change that much because really what we're doing is we're trying to decrease the amount of time that we're carving as much as we possibly can without breaking bits. That's going to be one of the key um, issues that uh, first-time CNC operators will deal with is trying to figure out how fast they can run their machine without breaking bits. And that can vary and, and it, it depends on the design of the machine, the type of spindle, how accurate it is, the amount of run out, all kinds of you know, the type of wood you're cutting, that sort of thing. But those settings I've been using for, for several years now. I actually started using them when I was using the Inventables X car. And I had to uh, change them up slightly when I went to the, my uh, custom built machine. And they didn't change all that much. And one thing you'll find is, is that you can tweak your, your feed rates and your depth of cut and step over to try to decrease the amount of time it takes to make a cut. But I think you'll find that changing those numbers doesn't really significantly reduce the amount of time it takes to do a carving operation. If you really want to cut time and make your, your cutting as fast and as efficient as possible, what you really have to consider doing is going in and editing your G-code to make it more efficient. And that's an area that I haven't really messed around with too much because I'm not really um, trying to drastically reduce the time for production reasons or anything like that. I'm not a high-speed production uh, operation. So I really haven't uh, delved into the whole editing uh, G-code. I've done a little bit, but not a whole lot. So um, Now, the way that I came 
to, to those numbers. And this is kind of interesting because a lot of folks will notice that there are online calculators that you can uh, input the specifics for your CNC machine and the bits that you're using to figure out the feed rate, the spindle speed, and um, depth of cut, step over, and all that kind of stuff. And these calculators, they, they, they might be an okay um, kind of a, a rough idea of what you need to do, but I found that that information was, was never really very accurate. Um, I may be for certain kinds of machines, but uh, I found that it caused more trouble than it, it solved. And what I ended up doing was I bought a 10 pack, a bulk pack of my fret slotting bits. And this was back when I had the X carve. And what I did was I, I used uh, Inventable's easel software just to kind of get an idea of where to start with the feed rate, the step over and, and depth of cut. And I started playing around with that. And um, after a couple of broken bits, I realized uh, where I needed to be as far as the uh, optimum feed rate, depth of cut, and step over for that tiny little bit. From there, I was able to kind of scale that, those numbers up to the different bits that I'm using. So um, you can kind of play around with some of those online calculators if you want to, but really what it comes down to is actually running the machine and breaking a few bits and figuring out exactly what the best speeds are. And once you hit that, uh, for each bit, uh, it's not really that complicated. And, and uh, you'll find that, you know, for example, with my fret slotting bits, those bits will last uh, a dozen fretboards before I have to replace them. And the reason I have to replace them is because when you're using these uh, type of bits, the carving is all done at the very tip. And as time passes, that tip slowly wears away, so the bit actually gets a little bit shorter. And you'll get to a point where you'll suddenly realize the slots aren't deep enough to accommodate the tang on your frets. And that's at the point where you have to uh, replace the bit with a new one. So, But again, I can get a dozen fretboards out of one bit, and that's pretty good. Okay, well that sums up the uh, different settings that I use with my CNC machine and the different bits uh, for the different cutting operations uh, when I start a new guitar project. And what I'm going to try to do is organize all these settings into a PDF file. And I'll include a link in the description below so you can download that file and use it as a reference or you know a starting point for determining uh, the settings that would work best for you with the machine that you have and or are, are considering. So um, until the next episode, uh, take care and we will see you soon.